What is up everyone? So in this video what I'm going to be doing is updating my whole view uh, on training frequency and responding to any criticisms that I've received as a result of my video on uh, why I think bro splits are good for bodybuilding. So if you guys haven't seen this video yet, I'd recommend going and watching that first. And then also if you do want to hear the thoughts of someone who is coming at this question uh, from a slightly different vantage point than me, I'd recommend checking out my interview with Menno Henselmans, uh, where he lays out the case for high frequency bodybuilding. And then I'll also be putting some training footage uh, up over my talking uh, just to keep you guys occupied. Uh, so what I'll be putting up there will be my most recent back day and chest and shoulder day from this week. First criticism I'll get to is uh, basically a terminological one. Uh, so I've been accused of basically conflating two terms uh, that we can treat disparately and those are enjoyment and adherence. The idea is that as evidence-based practitioners we shouldn't be making recommendations based on how much someone enjoys a given program. Because if that person is really dedicated and, and really disciplined, then they should be able to adhere to the program even if they don't enjoy it. And to that I would just say that, you know, I, I completely agree. There have been training programs that I've, I've run in the past that I've absolutely hated. I, I would just dread going to the gym. Um, but I've never ever missed a training session uh, because I just didn't feel like going to the gym or I felt as though uh, the training session wasn't going to be enjoyable uh, because I recognize that if I want to maximize my results there are going to be periods of time where I just don't enjoy the training as much. And just as one quick example of this, I remember, I think it was in early 2013, I was running a short-lived endurance focused phase. So every single set in this phase consisted of 20 plus reps. I would be doing six sets of 20 reps on squats with like one minute rest intervals. In retrospect, I'm not entirely sure why uh, I was so convinced that this was a, a good idea given that my goals were both hypertrophy and strength oriented. But nonetheless, I managed to get through that program. If nothing else, I came out the other side with a sort of renewed sense of my own self-discipline. And I think that running some programs like this are a really good way to sort of build trust in your, your own faculties, in your own ability to, to be disciplined and to, to grind through phases of training that you don't necessarily want to do. But what I would say is that I think we need to consider all levels of adherence. So what I'm gonna outline here are just three. Adherence in showing up at the gym and doing your split is what I would consider to be base level adherence. You go to the gym, you follow what's on your program, you go home. I think that going beyond that, you would have adherence to a certain amount of effort. So that means that you're actually pushing yourself hard and pushing your limits when appropriate. And then also there's long-term adherence, so longevity. Just because you can dig up the discipline at present and get through your routine doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to do that over the next 5, 10, or 20 years. You can't just think about being disciplined and overriding your lack of enjoyment in the short term. You also need to think of how that psychological approach is going to serve you over the course of your entire training career. And I think that that's where enjoyment can become more important. And then also the other note that I would have on this point is that I think it's important to direct that discipline appropriately. It seems reasonable to me to think that we probably have a limited capacity of discipline, just like we have a limited capacity of focus or attention. Directing your discipline towards things that probably don't matter much is probably not a good use of that resource. And so just to sort of sum that view up, I would say that enjoyment really is only important when you have two protocols that are physiologically quite similar. The level of enjoyment would serve as a good sort of tiebreaker. I think people spend too much time worrying about their split, how it's organized in the week. I think that when designing a split for your program, the most important things are that it allows you to get in enough weekly training volume. It allows for sufficient recovery between sessions. And then the third thing would be more personal or subjective factors like do you enjoy running that split? Does it line up well with your work schedule or the amount of time that you have to train? Does it prioritize weak points? But in terms of having one split that's been shown in the research to be physiologically superior to another, 
I think that that's a little bit overblown. And so that leads me into the second criticism I've received, which is that there's all of this research that shows a benefit of increasing training frequency. And so it's ridiculous to recommend bro splits at this point. And to that I would just say that, well, first of all, I'm not recommending the classic bro split where you hit a body part literally once every eight days. I'm recommending that you hit a body part with a large bolus of volume once every five days or six days if you take the rest day and then also hitting it with another small bump of volume a couple of days later. So really you're hitting each body part at least two, sometimes three times in that week. Secondly, I would say that I think that people are exaggerating the strength of the research that actually supports higher frequencies. So what I'm gonna do now is just read a few excerpts from the relevant studies and just try to illustrate that this data is still fairly preliminary and doesn't actually draw the strong conclusions are certainly not as strong of conclusions as you would think they do based on the confidence that people making these recommendations have. So the first thing that I wanna look at is the most recent study put out on this topic by Brad Schoenfeld, Dan Ogborn, and James Krieger. They took 10 studies and they did what's called a systematic review and a meta-analysis. Essentially, they pooled the results of the studies together and tried to draw general overall conclusions. Their concluding remark was that the current body of evidence indicates that frequencies of training two times per week promote superior hypertrophic outcomes compared to one time. Whether training a muscle group three times per week is superior to twice a week protocol remains to be determined. That said, training a muscle group once a week was shown to promote robust muscular hypertrophy and remains a viable strategy for program design. They also acknowledge in the discussion of the paper that a proposed benefit of using a split routine is that it allows for a higher training volume per muscle group while maintaining intensity of effort and providing adequate recovery between sessions. It remains to be determined whether employing split routines with reduced weekly training frequencies per muscle group may be an effective strategy to enhance hypertrophic increases by allowing for the use of higher volumes over time. So basically, uh, there's not a whole lot of data on this stuff, and while the general trend does indicate that two times per week is most likely better than one time a week, uh, we still don't know really anything about whether training frequencies higher than two times a week is better or not for hypertrophy. When you actually dig a little bit deeper and look at the actual studies themselves, what you see is that the results are even kind of weaker. If you go on in the paper, they say that relatively few trials supported a preferential effect of one frequency above another with respect to muscle growth. Uh, so what they did in the discussion of this paper was highlight two studies that did show a statistically significant difference. The McClester et al. study compared three days per week frequency versus one day per week frequency. And what they found was that there was 8% gain in lean body mass in the three day per week frequency and only 1% gain in lean body mass in the one day per week. However, when you actually look at this study, you'll see that all that the subjects were doing were three sets per week per muscle group. To me, this makes me question how applicable the results of this study are to people who are running very high volume programs. Literally did only three sets. So can you imagine only doing three sets for your shoulders? Uh, it, it would be virtually nothing, like it's so small compared to what people actually do in the real world. Um, so I do have difficulty putting a lot of weight in that study, even though I will acknowledge that it doesn't really surprise me that spacing of the training would be better when you're only doing three sets once every eight days for a given body part. The second study that they highlight is Schoenfeld et al. I discussed this in my last video, but the main deal with this study was that they only found a difference in the biceps and the changes in thickness for the elbow extensors, the triceps, and the vastus lateralis were pretty comparable between the two groups. And then they conclude, uh, after highlighting these two studies, that the remaining studies found comparable effects of training frequencies between one and three times per week across various populations. So just going to another resource other than that systematic review, even though I think that that's probably the strongest chunk of data that we have right now. But another really, really good resource that uh, I often forget 
just how great it is, is strengthandconditioningresearch.com. So they broke up their section on training frequency into two different parts. One part focused on untrained individuals. So they investigated four different studies. Essentially what they found was that training with a higher frequency is unlikely to be superior for hypertrophy in this population. And when you actually look a little closer, you see that there was one study that actually showed a superior effect of training with a lower frequency. I guess the case could be made, albeit weekly, uh, that for untrained populations, if anything, training with a lower frequency might be a little bit better. Uh, when you look at the trained section, you'll see that they investigated three different studies, and what they found was that only one study reported a superior effect of training with a higher frequency uh, compared to a lower volume matched frequency. And their conclusion was that training with a higher volume matched frequency might be superior for hypertrophy. However, when you look at the actual studies, again, the only one that did actually support higher frequencies was McCluster et al., which is the same study that we already talked about, which used the, the ridiculously low volume of only three sets per week. Again, I'm not sure that I'm completely comfortable extrapolating that result to recommendations for people who are running much, much higher volume programs. And then if we just quickly look at their table on the effective frequency on hypertrophy in trained individuals, we see that the research quantity is few studies, confidence is low, and the long-term study findings is that higher volume mesh frequency may cause uh, increased hypertrophy. Yeah. But again, when you look at the studies, only one study actually supports that out of the three that they looked at, and that study does have its uh, limitations. And then the last study that I'll just really briefly mention uh, is Wernbaum et al, 2007. And while they do make the general recommendation to hit a body part two to three times per week, when you look at the studies that they, they investigated to actually make this recommendation, almost all of the studies didn't match for volume. Uh, so it would make sense that if you're training at a higher frequency, but basically just doubling or tripling the work that you would have done if you were only training one day per week, then it would make sense that you would see you know, more hypertrophy. And then the one study that was you know, volume equated that, that did have an effective frequency was again McCluster et al. McCluster et al. Look at what we did, yeah. And I just don't know how much weight I want to be putting into one single trial that used volumes that would be lower than what you would see in the real world. If I were to sort of step, take a step back from my own personal biases and just look at it as a whole, I would say that training every body part once a week uh, probably isn't enough to optimize hypertrophy, uh, but certainly is enough to make considerable progress. If I were to just make a weekly recommendation to people uh, I would say to probably train each body part twice a week. If the split works, then three times a week, but there's no evidence to suggest that three times a week would actually be better. In the old school classic bro split, you have seven full days of not hitting that muscle, and then you hit it again. On my routine, you have a big hit of volume on one day, then you have a rest day, then you have another small hit of volume, then you have a rest day, then you hit it with a big bolus of volume again. So if we count the small hit of volume, which I think that we should, given that it doesn't take very much to, to see a, a spike in muscle protein synthesis. This has been shown in studies where we see that even just one all out set to failure will be enough to activate the mechanisms required to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. But just to be sure, I typically will include four sets with one set taken to failure. Okay, so summing up sort of how it is that I've updated my split is just one simple change. I would add three or four sets of wide grip pull-ups on the leg day before you start legs and give you that sort of hit of frequency. Um, to tide you over until the next back session. But on all the other days, you know, that's already done. If you were to walk away with one sort of uh, all-encompassing message, uh, it would be that there really are no special splits. It seems to be the case that volume is the main driver of hypertrophy. It's likely that you need to reach some effort threshold in order to sort of optimize your muscle gains. And if you happen to enjoy training at a lower frequency and that allows you to push yourself harder, adhere to the protocol better, and so on, it's not likely that you're leaving a whole lot of gains on the table. So guys, that is going to conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video or you learned something, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.